Escaping mount is a necessary defense that we need to have in our jujutsu game. Being stuck under somebody in mount is not an option. If we can't escape mount, we're going to get submitted way too many times and we're not going to improve. Watch this video and then you will have much more success in your roles and your jujutsu. Let's start off fast with some fundamentals and then we'll get right into the escapes. Having incorrect hand positioning will get you tapped faster than you think from the mount position. We want to establish inside control. That means I want to have my elbows on the inside of his knees and from here I'm trying to bring him forward so I can have my hands by his ribs. That'll lead to one of our escapes later. Creating a strong frame against his hips is also another good option for our future escapes. As we bring him down, we want to have our hands planted against his waist so he isn't able to go to a high mount position. Losing inside position can have dire consequences. Here we can see I'm either getting armbarred or he's moving to a high mount. From the high mount, he can set up other attacks, which may include this armbar as well. When we go over our escapes, make sure that you are thinking about inside positioning so this doesn't happen to you. Let's move on to the next step where we actually talk about the escapes. Escape one is going to be the frame and shrimp. Our goal here is to create a strong frame against his hip. Once we have this frame established, we can bump our opponent up and use our elbow to create a nice wedge so we can shrimp out. We can confidently bump them forward because we have such a strong frame that they won't be able to move to the high mount position. The first step is that we need to have our elbows on the inside of our opponent. Once we're here, we're bumping our opponent forward with our knee. We want to bump them into our frame. I bring my right arm across his waist and then I support my right arm with my left hand against the wrist. From here, we're bumping our opponent up by doing a bridge and we're using our elbow to guide the leg into our half guard. Once we are in half guard, we can start to shrimp out, use our left arm as the underhook and establish whatever guard we want to go to. It's important that when we bump, we have to get our hips and back off the mat. If I do a terrible bump, he's not going to go anywhere and this escape won't work at all. Make sure to bridge hard, get your butt and back off the mat to properly do this move. We use our elbow instead of our hand as a wedge because it's supporting our right arm and it's also not overexposing ourselves. If I were to use something like my hand, I may risk getting my hand peeled and get put in a kimura or an arm bar. Here are some more reps at a more realistic speed. Notice that I turn towards the leg before I turn back into the half guard. By turning into his hips, it'll be much easier to complete this escape. The kipping escape is my go-to mount escape when I'm facing against a more skilled competitor. This escape is very efficient against opponents that have a strong mount that prefer to vine around your legs. There are two situations that will happen with a kipping escape. When you start to bump them, you might be able to just get to the open guard position, or they might be vining really hard around your legs and you're going to have to put some more effort to get them back into a more favorable position. Let's go over the setup and then let's complete this escape so you guys can rep it as well. We go back to basics and we already have our elbows on the inside of his knees because we don't want to get exposed. Now when we bump him forward, however, we're looking to have our hands by his sides on the ribs. These hands in this position will help us lift our opponent when we're going to bump him up in the air to try and get our legs on the inside. After we bump him forward, we want to get our legs moving immediately. By building some momentum, this will clear any vines you'll have around our legs so we can move on to the next step when we try and actually escape this mount. In a perfect world, we would be able to use this momentum and then shove him up by using a nice bridge, using our hands to create a space, and bringing our knees to the inside to establish a butterfly or an open guard position. While this escape may work sometimes against various opponents, we should be aware that we can't always get a free escape just by shoving them up and putting our knees on the inside. Make sure to rep this one out so you understand the technique, but then let's move on to this next part where we can see how to do it when they're actually holding a strong mount. After I build momentum here, my opponent still has a nice vine around my legs. Because of this, I can't just shove him off of me. Instead, I have to turn to my side, pick a hip, and then do this kipping motion while extending my arms. By doing this, I can free myself from the mount position and start to work my next play. It's important that when I do this motion, I have to keep strong frames on his hips because I don't want to shove him right into high mount. When I'm doing the kipping, I want to extend my arms but keep his hips in control so I can move out and into a more advantageous position. Here are some reps with some more speed. The goal is I want to get my elbows on the inside. Once I have my elbows on the inside, I'm looking to bump him forward and start my momentum. With this momentum, I can choose where I'd like to go. I'm pushing him out to the side and then I'm moving into the single X position. Escape number three is a jujitsu classic. This is what everybody should first learn when they're trying to escape 
but it's still tried and true. It's not as fancy as the fourth and last escape, but it's still something you should add to your game because you need to have this hip motion to be able to do well in Jiu Jitsu. We immediately start by having our elbows on the inside and we want to roll towards our side. I cannot stay flat on my back or this motion won't work. After I bump my opponent, I'm going to take my far leg and I'm going to scoop up his heel. Once I scoop up his heel, I'm pulling it back. I can pull it back and then use my elbow to push his knee so I'm allowed to use my own leg to turn into his hip. Once I can turn into the hip, I keep rotating and I can take a half guard position and look for an underhook. Notice how tight my elbows stay throughout this whole move. I keep my elbows on the inside of him and I'm keeping my hands by my head. We keep our hands here so we aren't exposing our arms so he can grab us with an arm bar. When I use my elbow to help pummel the leg, I use the elbow instead of the hand because I don't want him to grab my hands and look for an arm bar as well. If we can stay in this tight position, it'll be much easier to rotate our hips. If you prefer to have the strong frame that we did earlier, feel free to use it. The only difference here is we're not doing that large hip bump. We're just scooting onto our side and we're scooping in the heel to help us capture. We're still using the elbow to pull it across so we can turn into the half guard. Here are some faster reps of the same motion so you can see how I do it. Again from earlier, notice that once I turn out, I'm turning into him immediately. The faster I can turn into his hip, it'll give him less time to defend these mount escapes. Number four is the spider escape and you'd be surprised on how many people I hit this on. I've done this move to my professor and other black belts so there's no reason that you shouldn't be able to do it as well. Let's dive in to this technique. We start the same way where we want to bring our elbows in. I bump him forward with my knee and my hands go to his armpits because they're going to help me secure the spider position. I replace my hands with my feet and I'm extending him so I can exit through the back door. Notice that when my hands go to his armpits, I'm sliding down and giving him the high mount. This allows my hips to come in and I can use my feet to replace my hands. Now I have the extra power for my legs to help me push and exit the back door. Your hands are safe if they're in the armpits because it'll stop your opponent from using their arms. You also want your hands in the armpits because it'll be much easier to send them forward. After we send them forward, we need to get our legs moving. I get my lower back off the mat. By getting my lower back off the mat, that means he won't be able to vine around my legs. It's very difficult to hold a vine if my hips are this far off the ground. Once my feet are in the correct position, I can release my hands. I use my legs to push and then my arms are going under him to help escape out the back door. Make sure to avoid any triangles on the way out. Here are some faster reps so you can see how I do these. Notice that when I'm doing this, it's all a smooth motion. I want to make sure that my arms are safe as I exit because I don't want to get caught in a submission. Because my legs are not controlled, I'm not in danger of any heel hooks or foot attacks, so make sure to keep your legs extended to help you push until you can safely escape. This brings us to the wrap up for our mount escapes. We covered a lot of techniques in this video. You want to make sure to check out this video multiple times so you have your elbows, your hips, your feet, your back all in the correct positions. Once you add these things to your game, you're going to be able to escape so many more positions and then you won't be threatened nearly as much in Jiu Jitsu. If you appreciate the video, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. These videos take me a long time to make, but I'm hoping I can help out a lot of people that are having problems with their Jiu Jitsu game. Also, thank you to all my current patrons. I appreciate all you guys. The new moves will be coming out soon on the channel. If you guys want to see more moves like this check on my patreon page so you can have all the secret techniques that i teach others thanks for watching